Woohoo! Okay, we're live. Oh man, I'm doing this live a different way. You know, I'm doing it the easy way, probably the way that absolutely everyone else does it but me. I've always done it, you know, the hard way with my encoder and all of that. So I decided to do it the easy way. And now I'm totally confused. <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> so that's all right. Um, okay. I'm just going to, this, I just wanted to be live today. I don't know why. I guess I just needed someone to chat with. Is that what I needed? I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm probably going to be making some painty papers and some, I don't know what, um, I've got some stuff to show you, you know, like a haul or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's take a few minutes and let's wait till some people get here. Okay, I don't see the chat. I don't remember what I have to do to see the chat. Oh, see, everything changes. It's all new. And then I don't know what to do because I haven't done this in a while. I really should be doing more videos and more um, everything, really. But, yeah. <laughs> Time. There is that. Okay, let me see. Oh, there we go. I've got the chat up now. Let me pull this over to the side. Sorry. Just give me a second. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, oh, Stitch and May. Hey, girl. No, this is paper. I'm going to show y'all this really cool um, paper that I got because it's really cool. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting chat now. I'm chatting everywhere. Okay, I'm good now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you what I scored, and maybe y'all can help me think of what to do with it, because I've got a lot of it, and this isn't even most of what I scored. I had so much of it. I ended up giving most of it to Rosemary Morris. Like, she's got more than I do now, because I don't have room to keep it, so I gave her most of my haul. Hey, Barb, I'm so glad to see you here. Thank y'all so much for taking the time to pop in. I really appreciate you. Hi, Janet. Oh, it's so good to see y'all. It's so good to just sit down and chat and not stress. I've been just really stressed lately. I don't know why. I do know why, <laughs> but I can't do anything about it. So anyway, I'm just so glad y'all are here and let's just sit and have some fun today. I got, okay, I do want to talk about these papers. I also want to talk about this box. And I posted a picture on something, probably Instagram, of a box significantly larger than this, full of these. These are paper sample books like that you get from the paper mill. You know, like the people who actually make the paper or the distributors, the ones who distribute it. And so, it, you know, it's things like um, Nina paper and Mohawk and, you know, the different mills who produce paper, um, uh, you know, French paper. Gosh, those are so cool. I have to show you that one. Anyway, these are the ones I saved. I gave the rest to Rosemary. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. So let me show you what they are. Hey, y'all. Welcome. Come in. Have a seat, pull up a chair, get comfortable, because I just need to sit for a spell. Okay, so these paper um, books that you get from the mills, and you can go to the website for the paper mills, and usually you can buy these, but, like, they're not super cheap. Um, people who work in the industry can sometimes get them for free, you know, if they have, like, a relationship with the mill. But um, otherwise, you have to buy them. Or maybe if you get hooked up with like a printing company. Hey, Shelly, I'm glad to see you. 
um, like a printing company or graphic design company who, who accumulate a lot of these and they need to get rid of their outdated ones, you know, you could do them a really big favor and take them off their hands. This is French Paper Company and there's like, they print really cool stuff on their papers. I mean, what they're doing, they're just kind of advertising, you know, showing their different colors of paper and, and textures they have available. But they put some of the coolest designs on their papers. They're just so fun. I love them. So, yeah, these are really great. I will probably just, I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, I'll cut them up and use these cool designs. Well, okay. We all know that I'm just going to sit here and love on them for a while. And hey, Vicki, my friend Vicki Ross, my friend and neighbor is here. So yeah, this is, this is one of them. There's another one. Okay. This one, Nina is one of my favorite paper companies. And this is one of their, uh, whatever you call it, their sample deals. But look how this is made. It's made, it's like, like a presentation thing. And y'all people get, they like these, these companies, they win design awards sometimes for their, um, kind of their sample books. And they're some, cause some of them are really cool. So here we go. Hi Claudette. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad everyone's here. Just the fact that anyone at all showed up <laughs> tickles me pink. <laughs> okay. But I mean, this has, look, it's got this little book that explains stuff. I don't bother reading the words. I'm not interested. <laughs> I just want to look at the stuff. And then look, there's this portfolio and then you open it up and then it has different this is samples of their paper and, and examples of how printing looks on the paper. And look, they just send all kinds of cool little things. And these just, these fascinate me. I don't even know why, but they do. Look, is that not just like the coolest ever? What do you do with that? I got no clue. Oh, look, ring sizes. How awesome. Like, I don't even, I don't, I don't want to tear this up. Oh, thank you, Janet. I appreciate it. Yeah, if y'all don't mind telling people that I'm live and showing them where I'm at, because I'm not really sure where I'm at, <laughs> that would just be awesome. <laughs> I really should have done that myself, but I am flying by the seat of my pants lately. Um, yeah, this is just life right now. Look at these. I love this. So, okay, it comes with this, and then it comes with this little, I don't know, flip book thing, and what, what is, oh, oh, did you see that? Did you see what it did? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is cool. Y'all, we can duplicate this. Look, this is not hard. How awesome. I really like that. Oh, very cool. I should have looked at this a little bit better before I started this. But I did it. So, yeah. I'm discovering it. Oh, Claudette, my yellow sister. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I know, right? You totally want to try that? Okay, y'all, take a look at this. Designers use them for ideas to pitch to clients. Yes, Vicki. Vicki knows all about what these are and how they're used because she is in the know. But see, look at this. It's two cards, the same size, a slit to the middle on each one, top down on this one, bottom up on this one, and then just design it to where when they come together, that this makes one picture. And then, then you put whatever all of this other is. I don't even know what this is. Are they, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to read it. But I just think this is awesome. So there you go. There's your idea for the day. Hey, Arlene, I'm so happy to see you. And hi, Kimberly. 
Thank y'all so much for taking a few minutes to show up. I do appreciate you. Okay. Um, okay. And this is a, this is kind of their swatch book that's in this little deal. And see, it has, it shows their colors, their textures, different paper weights. So, you know what? I could just pull this apart and then I've got this whole thing full of blank um papers to use and these are all cardstock some of them have patterns on them or textures but I love the way that's made and then they put this one in here this is a little one that has other examples of their papers but how fun is that I like that it's just so interactive and just this whole thing, like you could duplicate this with cardstock and make it like an art box. I was looking at um, Halloween ideas the other day. Have y'all ever visited that website, How to Haunt Your House? I think it's I think it's HowToHauntYourHouse.com. Anyway, they have some. They have all kinds of awesome free downloads and stuff there. And then I was looking through, I clicked somewhere on there and ended up on their YouTube channel where they had some videos from several years ago. And one was a playlist for how they made, I think they called it a vampire box or something. <gasps> it was so cool. It was just this chest that had all kinds of, of vampire hunting stuff in it and the top came out and in the bottom there was you know like wooden stakes and a big cross <laughs> it was just so incredibly well done and I just love me you know a good Halloween creepy project so um anyway that's what this reminds me of the way it just folds out and then there's all goodies tucked inside that appeals to me so this is not what the standard paper sample book things look like. That one's kind of special. But then there are, this one's from Wausau. And yeah, see it's just spiral bound and it flips. Okay. I could do something with that. I don't know what. Um, this one, I may paint this one today because look at this. This is just a little cheesy spiral bound sample thing from someplace called box board packaging and <laughs> right no dolls I am perfectly fine with vampires and werewolves and monsters and and demons and pretty much anything except dolls or clowns you got that right Vicki so anyway this has samples of craft papers and craft papers and craft stock and chipboard and uh, wraps and I don't even know what and then here's corrugated boards. I think this would be just really fun to paint on. And someone took a hunk out of that one. That's okay. Hey Carla, I'm happy to see you and hi Deborah. Thanks for coming in y'all. I appreciate you. Yeah, we may paint on this. I'm going to set that one aside just in case. And let's see, is there anything else cool in here? I'm not sure. Um, this is another Nina. Oh, that's really pretty. See, some of the stuff they do is just really pretty because they want you to see how nicely it prints. But y'all, look at these. These are not, not difficult to make. Look how these are made. Okay, folds out. You just have to leave enough, you know, so that it folds over. And then this is nothing more than just the um, piece of stock extended up, scored, folded, and then staple your little whatevers to it. There is nothing to it. Like, we could do these. Vicki, I got these from 1320. These were... Um, stockpiled from, you know, the other company. And there were books that dated back to like 2007. It was ridiculous. They're, you know, completely outdated. Why they kept them, I have no idea. But I'm kind of glad they did because now they're mine. They're mine and Rosemary's. <laughs> so let's see. 
Oh, this one. Okay, this one made me want to alter it just because of the artwork on it. It says Carnival, which I'm, I'm guessing is Carnival cover. Yeah, Carnival writing text and cover papers. But look, it's all like Carnival and, and circus related. Isn't that cool? There's another one that goes with this that had even more printed stuff that was just super cool. I wonder if I kept that or if I gave it away. I kept it, but I don't see it. Oh, these. Look. Look at these images. Aren't those fab? See, this shows the same image printed on different stocks with different finishes and different weights. This just, it just really makes me want to alter this in some way. I don't know what way. I don't know. Something needs to be done with these. Something cool. So anyway, I saved a box full of those so that I can play with them and pet them. And all of that. Um, okay, so also when I got that haul, um, I also ended up with a ton of exotic papers like these. These were also sample books, swatch books from manufacturers. And what I did, I took the books apart because they were like there were tons. They were big and bulky. They were mostly outdated. Um, I think some of the companies are not even in business anymore, but they were still full of really cool papers. So I kept some, I gave some away, but I don't know what to do with them because a lot of them are really weird textured papers. I'll look through these. See, some of them are just printed. This has kind of gold foil thing going on. And these are printed, but these feel like, like a mulberry paper, I guess. Or handmade paper that's printed with metallics. That one's pretty. So there's this kind. And then there's this really textured, weird, I don't know. I mean, the textures are cool, I think. They're kind of cool. But they're so metallic, I'm just, I'm not sure what to do with them. Kathy, I got all of this when um, my local craft store, 1320 Creative, they bought Canvas Court brands that closed and went out of business. They bought their inventory and assets, not the company, just all their stuff. And this was in the stuff that they bought. Um, Canvas Corp had, I guess, kind of hoarded these over the years. And um, 1320 doesn't need them. Like I said, they're mostly outdated. So they passed them along and I grabbed them. I saved some, I shared some. Now I just got to figure out what to do with them. I kind of want to paint over that. I don't know. <laughs> this really makes me happy. I'm kind of like, I'm going to set that one aside. We're going to, I'm going to have some alone time with that one later. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So yeah, these are the, um, small ones there's different sizes and these were bound in little books they had like a, a jute string running through them you know nothing fancy i think a lot of these are imported from india or somewhere oh, that one's kind of cool but i wish you could feel these i just thought you might like looking at them this one feels i guess it is paper it almost feels plastic it's got a really weird texture, and then there's a whole, I could just make like a book out of these or something. It's the same pattern, just different colors. Yeah, it is a lot of texture, Janet. It's, they're very, very touchy-feely. Okay, let's see. These are kind of more of the same, I think. Yeah, just a different size, different patterns. 
you see I've got my windows are open and then I've got glare happening sorry cool stuff there good for the jelly plate oh that's a good idea yeah I could do some jelly plate stuff on these ooh even even like pressing them down to make a texture in the paint I know, I know, Claudette, you really, I really wish you could touch these because it would make you happy. It, I know it would because it's making me happy. Okay, there's some cool ones in here. These are some marbled, you know, that paper marbling thing. Look at that. I love that pattern. Kind of tie-dyed. These are all handmade papers. Just beautiful. And this one, I don't know why I like these so much, but I do. And this one too. Okay. Now some more. I like that one. That one's kind of that reminds me of a like a 50s retro thing. There's some bigger sheets. There was a whole big bound catalog. And I gave most of them away and just kept the few. Like, I would have kept them all if I could. I just didn't have room to store them. So I just kept a few. And I took a lot. Uh, look at these. I took a lot of these up to the store, 1320 Creative. is a craft store in Springdale, Arkansas. And I took them up there to use in some uh, classes. I don't know how or what or when. <laughs> But that's the plan. These punch ones are kind of kind of cool. There's a bigger one of that one. Printed peacock feathers. And then look at that. These are just so cool. So yeah. I may end up sharing more of these because I'm realizing I kept an awful lot. Oh, I love that. But the ones I really, really love, I've only got a little strip of. Take them all and send some to you. That's the plan, Claudette. Oh, look at this one. I love that. And that. I could just sit here all day and go through these and feel them. This one, I really do not like the colors. You know, the silver with the sort of, it's almost like a terracotta. It just doesn't go, but it feels really good. <laughs> That's like the only reason I kept it. <laughs> hey, Messy Table Vicky. I'm so happy to see you. I'm here. I'm live. Laugh for no reason. That's another, like a mulberry-ish. And that one, I kept this because um, I never have orange. Vicki, oh, Vicki Ross, am I ignoring you? I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, um, you know, keeping up with the chat and what I'm doing. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. And Carla Cage fish so, oh I love it she's making a book with these types of different papers just to enjoy the paper not really do anything with it that is what it's all about y'all who cares if we do something with it if it makes you happy do it Look at this reminds me of some wallpaper my mother had in her bedroom wall in the 70s only like the roses were black velvet <laughs> the background was red you know, it looked like a brothel it was so bad <laughs> but she had a matching red velvet bedspread uh, it was pretty darn bad okay another big birth I really could I could just bind these all up into a book and just enjoy it 
Oh, Vicki Ross said she used to be the third twin. Rosemary got some and Wiki didn't. <laughs> well, guess what? I can fix that, Wiki. Because Lord knows I'm not going to be using all these. Look at that. These are kind of subtly textured. No reason is the best reason, isn't it, Shelly? I think so. Yeah, Claudette, they stopped short of the mirror on the ceiling. Um, I think that would probably have scarred me for life worse than <laughs> what they already did. So, <laughs> you know, thank goodness for those little blessings. Hi, Mary. I know. Look, I'm live. I'm live and stuff. This is, this is just fun. These are great. I love this black one. Mary, I'm just showing off some uh, papers that I recently acquired. These are all like exotic, handmade papers that I don't know what I'm going to do with, but I had to have them because um, they were not needed. So there we go. And these are some tissue papers that were in the pile. I think they're just single sheets, but these are really nice. Oh, y'all look at these. There were a few of these sewn papers stitched like this. It's like some kind of a handmade paper, and then they sewed on it in this cool way. I like pretty much, we could probably do this. I mean, theoretically, you know, if we just had some pretty threads, I guess. I don't know. I love this. This is so unusual. And then look at this one. It's like it was printed with the dots and then they sewed around it. Isn't that awesome? Claudette, most of these are not coated at all. Even the um, kind of shiny, shiny ones, you know, they've got like areas where they're coated, but the recess, recess part, they're not. Can y'all see? I'm not sure. But yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking these would probably not be the best for alcohol inks. They'd probably soak it up. And, uh, right, they are like some of the coolest papers I've ever seen too. I agree. And then there were some, look, I've got more. These were coming up some, some of the uh, smaller scraps. And a lot of them are the same as the, the bigger ones, but there's a few that are different. Let me see, because there's a couple that really I went. Okay, this one. Look at this. It's got jewels. It's got you know, it's it's embossed and it's cool. And then it's got little little rhinestone thingies in it, which is just very unique. Like I've never seen a paper quite like that. Okay, let's see. Here's another one that's got the little rhinestones and it's like, it's almost like they were put in while the paper was being made or something. It it's they don't look like they were glued on as an afterthought. I don't know. I don't know how it was done. But it's just super cool. That one is so elegant. I wish I had a big piece of that. And like these things, I mean, I'm sure I could pick it off if I really tried, but whatever they're stuck down with, they're stuck good. And there's another one, little stones on it. So, yeah, these are more scraps. There's more colored printed ones in here. Um, that's awesome. So I need to do something with these after I get through petting them. But I don't know what. So I hope y'all enjoyed looking through these with me. Oh, this is another one that's sewn. Okay. Printed paper with the metallic thing, and then it's stitched. 
Wow. Don't you know that is some expensive paper? I am willing to bet. Okay. Now, I'm bored with this. Let me get these put away. So, I'll come up with something to do with those. I like the jelly plate idea. I'll definitely um, give that a try. Here's some more sewing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> I like that. <gasps> Look at this. Wow. This is all stitched white on white. Black on black. Oh, look at that. These are just amazing. Okay. Maybe that's something you need to start doing, just sewing on papers. But they've got a really cool little stitch. Um, yeah, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so I've got all those papers and paper sample books to play with. Giveaway, oh yeah, these would, they would make great giveaways, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm, that is a very good idea. Okay, I'm backing up in the chat just to make sure I haven't missed anything really important. Go through your little bits, Carla. Yep, you've probably got little bits hiding that you need to um, pull out of hiding. Okay. Okay. On we go. Thank you all for showing up. If you just got here, thank you very much. I don't really have anything amazing planned. I just thought I might um, play. And so I've got some paints. I've got my little, this is a mess. My little um, Pac-Man waka 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 palette. And let's see. Got some brushes. And here's my paints. Okay. I thought I might just throw some paint on paper while we visit. You want to do that? Because I really just kind of want to visit. So this, is, this will be a good excuse. Um, I might do something with those. All right. I'm getting myself arranged here. Yes, Lisa, you're just in time to play. I don't know what we're going to play with, but I've got these paints um, that I pulled out. I've got some stencils. Where did my other stencils go? Hello. Okay. Let me pull out some stencils. And maybe squeeze out some paints. There's my water. I was thinking I might just paint a magazine. Uh, this is a recent issue of Bazaar with uh, Serena's butt and on you know several pages. If you don't get enough of Serena's butt on the cover, uh, you can read further in and <laughs> see some more of it. <laughs> but this has got pretty good paper in it. Some of the pages are kind of thin, but a lot of them are the you know thick paper. So. I thought I might just paint on here. I'm actually low on painting papers, which is not a problem I thought I would ever have. But when you don't paint for a while, that happens. I've used them and not replaced them. Put on my trusty Gina Aaron's apron. About Taylor's wedding plans, Shelly? Oh, she plans to get married. That's all I know. This child of mine is definitely my child. She is officially engaged. She has a beautiful ring. They want to get married sometime next summer. 
Um, but that's as far as she's gotten because she figured out that it's just a whole lot of effort <laughs> to plan a wedding <laughs> and being her mama's child. She's not all about that effort. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. There's effort. There's expense. She lives in the Monterey Bay area of California, which is extremely expensive. And, you know, like people go there to get married on purpose. Well, I'm sure most people get married on purpose. <laughs> but, I mean, they do it there on purpose because it is um, such a beautiful place. And because of that, uh, it's expensive. You know, like thousands of dollars just to rent a venue. And, um, yeah, she's just, she's not feeling it. So I don't know what they're going to do. And I know that they want something small, uh, which I think is great. Just, you know, family, a few close friends maybe. So hopefully they'll get it together and get some actual plans going on. Hey, Rosemary, we've been talking about you, girl. It was all good. Um, I can't remember what it was, but it was all good. Destination wedding. Yeah, that would be good. Because, yeah, where Taylor lives is like a destination wedding for most people. <laughs> so she'll figure it out. Okay, I'm putting some colors out to uh, paint with. I didn't grab a card. Uh, okay, I'm going to get up and grab, whoops, grab a card. So, y'all hang tight. Just one second. It's not far, it's just right here. Oh, I thought it was. Where'd it go? Oh no, my cards are gone. Oh, got them, got them. Okay, ill prepared, sorry. <laughs> Let's just do the swappy thing, the rainbow, whoops, swappy thing, and um, see what happens. Where to put my magazine? No, this is not go there it is. There we are. Okay. Can we all see? Not too much glare happening. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna take my little card and take my little paints and then just do that and do this. And see what happens. Yeah. Oh, see, I like that. It's just instantly awesome. I'm going to tear that out, set it aside. And I just chose a rainbow of colors. It doesn't really matter what shade of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I just, you know, it works. As long as you don't mush them up too much, they will get muddy. I love this. This is so soothing to me to do. And this is just the first layer of probably what will be many. Unless, you know, I really like the way this layer turned out and want to leave it that way. And then what I do with them after this is anybody's guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter.
I like the way they kind of slide around on this uh, slick paper. That is kind of kind of cool. Okay, I have to say, if you have not taken Rosemary's encaustic class, you must. I took it live and in person um, last weekend. Is that right? Last weekend. And I learned so much. It was so fun. It was not difficult. She provides like everything you need to do the class is in her class kit. And it was just like the coolest thing. So, yeah, y'all, check out Rosemary's um, encaustic class on her Etsy site. I don't know if somebody can throw a link up in there. I, you know, I don't know, whatever. Y'all figure it out. You can do it. Um, I do recommend it because I took it and I love it. And then if you have a chance to um, take a class in person, <laughs> of course, I also recommend that too. Because that's the funnest. <laughs> okay. These are probably going to stick together over there, but that's all right. Now, if you wanted to, you know, put a layer of gesso down and do the whole, you know, fancy fussy thing, you can do that on magazine pages. And then you don't have as much stuff showing through. But I kind of like stuff showing through. That was cool. That was on a thinner page. Oh, remember that? Let's see what happens. If we paint over that a little bit like that. That looks kind of cool. I bet it would stamp kind of cool too. Ooh, that's something you could do with these texture stamps that's a possibility because the I mean the paper is like super textured they definitely would make a texture stamp okay now I wanted to do this book I think I'll put some more down, some more colors down. So, um, I don't really have a red out here. You know what, let's be smart. Get these out of the way before they get muddy. I have this little book. Got it. Now, let's do this rainbow. I got a bunch of these paints at um, Tuesday morning for $1.99. It's really a good price for these. These are all kind of fluorescent-y.
Okay, Let's see what happens with those. If you're just tuning in, welcome. I'm just making painty papers because I sort of ran out. So I'm just going through and painting on whatever papers I had handy here. Oh, that was cool. This is a sample book for some, uh, you know, like craft paper and cardboard and wraps and stuff. And yeah, these are probably going to stick together and I'm not going to freak out about that. Rosemary's link show. Thank you very much for posting Rosemary's link. Okay, what else is going on? Need the link. We got the link. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm, I'm scrolling through chat to make sure nobody's yelling at me and thinking I'm ignoring them. Okay, we're good. I wonder... possible to do that through a stencil. Is that possible? I don't know. Let's try it. Uh, I don't think that's going to work because you need to mush it down too much and it's going to mush underneath. Maybe if I had a sponge, it would work well. <laughs> kind of. It's like really thick and textury. It's going to super stick when I close the book. All right. We'll draw that a little. Dry a couple of these. Oh, I've got the dryer going. Hey, Aunt Beck. I'm so glad to see you here. And Miss Arabella, hello. Yeah, I really thought that was going to be a fail, but it was not the fail I thought it was going to be. It's still really wet. All right, that's okay. Oh, wait, I've got thingies. Where's my thingies? Really? Look, I'm prepared and didn't know it. <laughs> my wax paper has so much paint and goop on it that it usually sticks anyway. That's all right. All right, maybe if I had a wide brush. Okay, I'm going to figure this out. Hang on. Just sit tight. Uh, huh. Okay, I'm not finding the wide brush that I want, but I've got a couple of options. I wonder if maybe a spatula would work because it's rubbery. Oops. It feels kind of like maybe it's working. Sort of. Huh. 
I don't know. Let's just see. Yeah. It's almost like a texture paste because it's so thick. So um, that's kind of interesting. Dry it. Hi, Judy. I'm glad to see you. And Brooke. And did I say hi to Kathy? I think I did. Who else did I miss? I missed a lot of people. I miss Sharon. I'm glad to see y'all today. I was in one of my rare, extremely rare people moods. You know, normally I'm just very comfortable with my own company, introvert and all. But today, I was feeling like people. Janet, where can you get this stencil? Well, I'll tell you where you can get this stencil. You can get this stencil at a colorful life designs.com and you will see at the top of the page there is a section called Shannon Green. These are my stencils as in like I drew them. My hand doodled stencils and there's several of them over there um, that you can get and they're really cool. You know, well okay they're my stencils. Of course, I'm going to say they're cool. I think they're cool because most of them I design specifically because sometimes I like to stencil and then draw um, around the stencil, you know, trace it after I've already stenciled. And so that's why I designed these with that in mind so that you can draw around them or trace around them or do, you know, whatever you want around them. And, and I like that. They're open and easy and they're just kind of funky and cool. So pick those up from a Colorful Life Designs. If you go to my website, buyshannongreen.com, you'll see them on the front page of my website. You just click and it'll take you to um, a Colorful Life. Yeah, you need these in your life. I, I, <laughs> I totally agree with that. And y'all know how I love a good circle. Love me a good circle. <laughs> I've got lots of fun circles over there. You want to see some of these? That's what we could do. We could just stencil on some of these pages with these paints that I've got out. See? Fun. Uh... I wish I could still carry these brushes. I know y'all love these brushes. I used to have them in my store. I don't anymore because my Chinese supplier went way up on their shipping, like up so much that it is now cost prohibitive for me to even buy them. But I'm trying to encourage my local craft store to maybe start carrying them and putting them on their website because I know y'all love them as you should. These are just fantastic brushes. These are not the best color for the stencils. You can't really see it on the craft paper, but that's all right. I just want to fill this page and move on. You gotta have an eyeball. Everyone needs an eyeball. Let me get some darker colors going here. Um, let's go back to this. I'll mix it with these. And... Ooh, I have a huge paint booger, dried paint booger. There. Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I do have. Um, in the uh, video description down below the video, there are links to my website, I think. This is Harriet. I've got Harriet and Delilah. Where is Delilah? Delilah is in here somewhere. Y'all, I drew these after, there she is. I drew Harriet and Delilah after watching one of my favorite movies. It's called Mirror Mask. And um, I actually, I doodled several things after watching that movie. And it just the characters in it just really inspired me to um, draw weird characters. <laughs> So yeah, that's how these girls came about. And they ended up naming themselves. A lot of my stencils ended up naming themselves. Some of them didn't, try as I might. I could not figure out what they wanted to be. But these were doodles long before they were stencils. That's Harriet. She makes an excellent focal image. And Put Delilah over here. These brushes are great for stenciling. I should quit talking about them now that I don't carry them anymore. You can get them from Dick Blick. They call them glue brushes and they're really expensive. But, you know, if you got to have them, there's where you can get them. Okay, let's see. Making sure y'all are still with me, and you are. I'll do some of these in these brighter colors so you can see them. I love that eye. This one, this brush is a little big for what I'm doing, but that's okay. We'll make it work. These are great for ATC coins or to punch out. I've got a punch that's the size of the coins. And these are perfect for that. Where's the one? This one? <laughs> okay. I had a hard time coming up with a name for this one. And I think Mary Kay at A Colorful Life Designs ended up naming it because I just wanted to call it Flaming Vaginas because look at it. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I was thinking when I was drawing this out. But it looks to me like Flaming Vaginas. <laughs> Okay, on, onward. <laughs> um, get my card out and see if I can clean up some of this mess. I should have, right? <laughs> I'd probably sell a ton of them if I called it Get Your Flaming Vagina at a Colorful Life Design. Oh, well. Okay. Get them while they're hot. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all are supposed to be helping me behave, not encouraging my waywardness. <laughs> I think I'm getting to the end of my craft papers here. Yeah, you can't unsee it, junk journal shop. Yeah, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So, yeah.
So I really like that. That is accidentally very cool. Okay. Now, let's let those stick together. <laughs> I'll move on to something else. I told you that wax paper will probably do more harm than good. All right, going to set that aside, and then let's revisit some of these. Do I need to pull out some more paints? I might need to pull out a few more. I'm not entirely satisfied with what I've got. So give me a sec to wheel my little cart over here. If I'd actually planned this better, I'd be more prepared. Like 11 o'clock today, I thought, I just want to do a live stream. So that's why we're here. All right, now I've got a few more colors. Whew. Let's see. I'll look at this one and I feel like it needs some something. Okay. What does it need? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It needs blue of some sort. Little blob of blue. I'm just putting this on with my Dollar Tree spatula. In a just cause way. Like that. And now I'll set it aside and grab another one. Oh, which might also need some more blue. When I do painting papers like this, I just really don't even worry too much about the colors because I'm going to build up layers and just, you know, if something doesn't work, I'll paint right over it. And I'll just keep painting over it until it works. And usually it does. Eventually it'll get there. You know what I don't have is pinks. I've got like maybe two pink paints. And we need more than two. Everyone should have more than two, right? I think so. And the pinks that I have are not all that awesome. Now I'm thinking I should have got out my texture tools, but I didn't. So here we are. Rosemary said I need moderators. I do need, do I need moderators? Is someone causing trouble? I can't have that. All right. Let me see if I can um, fix that. You may end up being moderated, being a moderator against your will. 
if I can figure out how to do it. Oh, there we go. Hmm, give me just a minute. And I'm going to bump someone up to moderate. Okay. See, you don't even get a choice. You're just boom, instant moderator. <laughs> It's how I roll. <laughs> Y'all have to watch my back because, you know, you know that I'm like paying half attention. Okay. <laughs> yep, against your will. <laughs> oh, that's funny. See, y'all just have to pay me back next time I come to your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. <laughs> Is that enough? Do I have enough moderators? Okay, probably so. Okay, um, where was I? All right, I was adding pink. And, oh, Serena, honey, what do you want? You want some paint? There we go. I am in the mood for texture tools. It won't take me half a second to go get them. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab some texture tools. Y'all sit tight. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, I'm back. See, I knew exactly where they were. I just had to run and get them. Okay. This one. You want to see what my favorite texture tool is? I keep them in a, a drawer in my thing. I'll show you my favorite. Oh, my goodness. Where is it? this one it's a toilet paper tube with rubber bands wrapped around it and then I usually a lot of times it'll just fit on here and then I roll it this makes me super happy and I really like to do it in like a contrasting or a accent color like black or white or both So let's do that. Oh, thank you, Janet. Yes, remember to give me a thumbs up. That would be great because I like your thumbs. Now I just roll it through the paint and then Roll it on my paper. And it looks like, it looks like black rain. <laughs> let's call it, let's call it acid rain. <laughs> but look, it has such a simple tool to make rubber bands and a toilet paper tube. And you too can have acid rain. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and if you don't have a little rolly thing, you can do it. You can do it manually, you know. Whatever works, it's fine. Okay, that's one of my favorites. And then I also have some that I'm, oh, they're sticking together. Some of these I made that are um, 
it's those foam shapes, you know, um, with the sticky back, like for kids, you get them already cut up into shapes and a little assortment bag, whatever. They make cool textures too. Let's see, this paint is a little thick. I need my thin, cheap craft paint, which is right here. This is one of those instances where, yeah, your cheap craft paint works better because it's a little thinner. You can add water or whatever. I think this usually works. And I've used these so much, I don't get perfect impressions anymore. But that's all right. See? Isn't that fun? And then when this dries, you take your white gel pen or your white Posca, and then you can outline some of the little thingies or add more doodles on them. Whoops. Ah, I love that. Yeah, it does. It looks kind of like bricks. Just get the little sticky back foam shapes like they make for kids. And I have to put this someplace special so that it will dry and not stick to everything else. There we go. And um, stick them on your toilet paper tube. And some of them I had to glue on because the sticky wasn't all that great. But I did them um, in a bunch of different, like, see, this one had stars and triangles. And look at that. That is really painty. Um, I'm ill prepared. Okay, stick it there. Let's do the stars and triangles. This one, if I remember right, doesn't print super well. But that's all right. Let me just use one of our pages. And there you have it. Oops. Okay. Stars and triangles. Emma, you're watching Shannon Green live. Woohoo! <laughs> Girl, if that's the highlight of your day, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> but I am so happy that you're here. <laughs> we are painting, and I'm showing some of my texture tools that I've made and used. I haven't done painting papers in so long, so I'm like revisiting these things, and it feels all brand new because I haven't seen them in so long. But yeah, I've got toilet paper tubes with foam stickies on them to make different shapes that you can roll onto your painty papers or backgrounds or whatever you want. You can also take some of those foam sticker shapes and put them, I have these um, Formica chips that you used to get at the hardware store. And then, you know, you can do this. Well, now I remember why I didn't really like this. It's hard to get a good, a good impression for all of them. Yeah, because if one foam shape is just slightly higher than the others, then it can kind of mess up your whole um, stamping thing. Where did I put my book? Here it is. I'll go back in here. And... See, you can make your own stamps with those little foam do-wallies. So there's that. I made a whole bunch of those because I got a really great big bag of those foam deals. And 
I'll just um, made a whole bunch of different ones. I've forgotten all about these. Like I said, this is like feeling brand new. <laughs> Yeah, fun stuff. So there you go. Texture tools. What else is a texture tool? Let's see. Let's turn the page. We have, oh, you know what I like to do? Okay, here's what I like to do. Let's make another rainbow. Should have shaken that up better. Okay, red, orange, yellow. I need some kind of green. Green. Uh, what blue blue and purple okay and what did i do all that for i was going to show you i looked down here and i went oh I went, oh there it is okay got it got it got it Everyone's favorite. We all probably use this at one time or another. And that's bubble wrap, which you can use on your your uh, rainbow thing here, and then print it. And whoops. And then you get rainbow bubbles with a little bit of black underneath. <laughs> I love the way that looks. Okay, let me dry that a little. And then these, I almost always come in and, and trace around them or just make messy circles around them. They just want you to do that. There's just some shapes that really want you to trace around them. And you, you're just almost obligated to do that because it's what they want. It's what the thing wants, right? Okay, now let me see if I can maybe save that and do something else on here. I may have enough paint left to do another one or two. A little bit. Um, -na 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 -na. Oh, a little keychain deal. That makes little fun blobs. Oh. That is kind of fun. They look like fireworks, don't they? Uh-huh. Love it, love it. Uh, dry it, dry it. Okay. I was just looking through my wipe off book earlier and it like it's looking like it wants to be made into something because it's getting full. Like almost every page has got some kind of an overspray or a wipe off or something on it. 
extra collage bits. So this will be a this can be a fun little something when I ever get around to doing something with it. Okay, I've still got this paint out. So, oh, this was made with glue. Helmar has a glue that I wish I could remember the name of it. I did a video for it several years ago, but it dries, you know, standing up like this. It's like, it's like hot glue that's not hot. Yeah. And um, you can make little stamps out of it. I put it on a piece of foam core and made a little, a little texture stamp. Yeah, there we go. I have some texture plates too. I don't remember where I got these. Patty Parish, maybe? I'm not sure. Let's press one of these down. Also, fun to trace around. Patty is here? Pa Patty is here. How funny. I just mentioned your name and you popped up and I didn't even have to like say it three times in a mirror the creepy way. <laughs> that was totally cool. <laughs> oh, that turned out neat. I love that. That's another one that just needs to be doodled around. I'm going to have fun doodling around these when all this dries. I like that one a lot. Did I just lay that into my... No, there it is. I thought, oh dear, I just laid that in my paint palette. But I didn't. I put it aside like a smart person might do. Patty has how many? 22 of your closest friends? Oh my gosh. The pressure. The pressure. Now I'm all nervous and watch me make a mistake or something. <laughs> like a mistake that I haven't already made 10 times today. Oh, Another texture tool, a fresco can. Okay, let's see. I like these for big circles because I don't know, it's like just the right size. And then I have like some empty tape rolls and stuff for other small circles. But this is just the perfect size. For bigger circles, if you ask me. Okay, I think I'm going to wipe this paint off. Or not wipe it off. You know, use it. Because it's getting kind of icky. And these pages that look kind of like a muddy mess, I just let them dry and then put more paint over them. And no one ever knows they were a muddy mess. Okay. Keep going. I can't just like outright waste paint ever. This is why I don't do that fabulous paint pouring, you know, that I think everyone is doing now. There is just so much waste, all that paint pouring off of the edge and 
I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I could probably let that dry and use it, you know, like an acrylic skin or something, but how many acrylic skins does one person really need? <laughs> well, I just can't make myself waste all that paint. I was talking recently to someone, I can't remember who, about these paint pouring places and the waste of paint and how, um, you know, I might like going to one. We have one here locally. It's a place you can go and they do paint pouring and resin pouring. And it's like those paint and sip places where you pay the fee and then they provide all the materials. I could waste their paint. You know, that wouldn't be a problem for me. I could pay to waste their paint. I just can't waste my own. So that is why you most likely won't see any paint pouring videos from me. Plus, I don't have the space to do it. It's super messy, so there's that. Turn this over. Turn this over to the clean side. Yeah, keep going. And now, oh, what do we do? Some more stencils. Let's do a background and then do stencils on it. Or let's go to one of our already backgrounds. Well, they're all drying. Oh, here's some. Go to one of our already backgrounds and do a stencil. Okay. Maybe, you know what I'm wanting to do? Ooh, I'm feeling it. I want to do this in white, but it's dirty. It won't turn out white. Let me get another one. Hang on. Um, squares. I'll do these squares with white craft paint. On my clean palette. Okay. And I want to spread that around a little bit. Oh, God, there's a huge paint booger. Oh, look. Gross. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to set it right here so that later I can drop something in it. Yeah, okay. You know, you use cheap craft paint, you get what you pay for. What are you going to do? Okay. Do this and what? Because then I can stencil over it with black. And I think that would look really cool. It's like extra layers of texture and pattern. Oh, that. Oh, maybe I need to do this. Ooh. Another booger. Ugh. I need to do that two or three times to use up some of that paint. All right. Put it there and here. shaving cream yeah I've got some uh, bigger ones like this that are the actual size of a shaving cream brush I mean like they could totally be a shaving brush except that this hog hair is not really soothing to the skin it's a little rough I've looked into having these made these are not all that easy to find anymore especially the bigger ones and it was just too expensive for me because, you know, I didn't order, didn't want to order five million. But I'm exploring options. We'll see. Maybe something will happen. 
never know. Ooh, you know what else I could do? Okay. This piece of paper, the one with the acid rain, might look cool with some dots on it. There we go. I like that. And some of these other ones too. Maybe I've got more of these. Let's see what else I've got. These I'm pretty sure were from Patty years ago. Oh, look, more stamps. Oh, I like that one. Maybe I'll use that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Loving it, loving it. This is so addictive and relaxing. Like I could just zone out here for hours. Just putting paint on paper in different ways, just for fun. Because it is fun. These have cool patterns. Oh, I love me a spiral. Okay. I don't know if these are clay plates, textures for clay, or what they were from, but they are very cool. Yep. Now let's do let's do a stencil in here. Find one I haven't used. Ooh, you know what? I've got enough black paint out. I could probably this is a mask, not really a stencil. how this ends up looking. Oh, I just set my book in my paint. That gun. I knew I was going to end up doing that. Oh, that's very cool. Very cool. Okay, it wasn't too bad. Draw that one a little. And Wax paper. All right. That was like a got to the cleanoff point, I think. Okay. Yep. All right. Flip back here and see if any of these are dry 
to revisit. Getting there. That needs something on it. That one needs this. These are my stencils that are at a colorfullaughdesigns.com. There's a whole like Shannon Green section. So if you like these, run over there and grab you some. They're really great for tracing around, doodling around, embellishing with doodles. Because that's what I like to do. I think I'm making a mess out of this one because I didn't have as much paint as I thought I did. There we go. Okay. That looks good. See, these are already looking fun. And that was really just pretty random slapping paint down. That's kind of a muddy one. Let's fix it up. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. I think it needs to be fixed up with some of this. There we go. Problem solved. Hey, I wonder. Um, do I have a paper towel? Kind of totally defeats the purpose of covering up the mud, but I can. Lay this down. No, I let it dry. It got too dry, too fast. Let's see if my baby wipe will work. You know, removing the paint through a stencil instead of adding paint through a stencil. That can be fun. So it helps if you get in there before your paint has dried. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. That dry. Hey, don't y'all be throwing shade on my heat gun now. I get people all the time offering to buy me a new updated heat gun. And my answer is no. <laughs> me and this girl have been through a lot together. Isn't that weird? I wouldn't, like I don't even want a brand new heat gun at all. Gee, that's a muddy mess, too. Okay. Ha, 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 ha. wonder what would happen if I threw some liquid acrylic on there. Not bad. 
Blech, never mind. I don't like those. Sometimes a good neutral is neon green or neon yellow. One of my favorite neutrals. Rosemary's auctioning off my heat gun. What? No. You know what? I nearly left it at Rosemary's house last weekend. <laughs> and she threatened to hold it hostage. And it gave me heart palpitations. <laughs> it's catnip for your binkles. How funny. <laughs> yeah. Me and that heat gun have just been through a lot together. And you know, okay, here's the story behind that heat gun. I bought that heat gun 27 or 8 years ago. And the reason I bought it was because Suze Weinberg had one just like it. If you know Suze Weinberg, she did a lot with Ranger back in the, from like, I don't know, mid 90s to late 2000s. She may be, still be with Ranger. I have no idea. But anyway, it's back when she was doing the like, um, embossing enamels the ultra thick embossing enamels and she was melting them in the little pot and making jewelry really like huge outrageous jewelry pieces with them they're fabulous and her heat gun was this weller and she used it so i bought it because you know if you buy the same tools that people you like use then <laughs> you get to create the same awesome art <laughs> that they create <laughs> hey Becky B this is my neighbor Becky B is here well we're not really neighbors but we both live in Arkansas and since I'm a native Texan you know that's we're practically neighbors no matter where she is in the state <laughs> so yeah I bought that Weller heat gun thinking that if I bought it then my art would be just as fabulous as Suze Weinberg's yeah it really it wasn't I couldn't do the amazing things that she did, but it made me happy to have the same heat gun that she did. And I like the heat gun. It's super hot. It has a super fine or a small um, radius on it. So you can get really, you know, detailed. You can hit just that spot or you can just do like this and get the whole thing, but it gets hotter than your average heat gun. So I really like it. And it's just all I've used ever since. So that is why I have the Bizarre um, heat gun. I bought it so I could be like Sue's. And then the thing never died. And I'm, you know, just naturally kind of a frugal person. So I can't replace something that still works just fine. So here we are nearly 30 years later. So that's that. And this is my swirls made from one of my swirly doodles. And just a blue craft paint and a shaving brush. How long have we been going? We've been sitting here like all day. Yeah, it's been like all day. This is just my plan for the day. So I'm good to just sit and keep going as long as y'all are watching. We'll just keep going. Oh, I like that. That's really pretty. Okay. Now I want to go back to some of the magazine pages. 
over here so I can lose it again. And there's this one. What does it need? Got this out. Might as well. Need some more blue. I guess it was this one. Yeah. Oh, totally messed that up. Try again. That's better. And uh, maybe some circles. There we go. Maybe a different color. I'm thinking yellow right here. Oh! Dropped my yellow and the blue paint. I'm going to deal with that later. Yellow doesn't cover very well. It's all right. That is all right. And, okay, let's go back to this girl. Decided that's what she needed. This one needs some circles. Yellow might be good. Let's see if I have a better yellow. Um, no. Apparently, I don't. Okay. Nope. Let me just see. Oh wait, here. I do. <laughs> and oh, you know what? I've got some of these kids' texture tools that I got somewhere. I don't know. Amazon. Let me get these. This might be fun. Okay. I'm going to play with those, but I wanted to put some circles on here, you know, littler ones, so I've got, this is a cap to a glue stick or something. Little yellow circles all over the place. Okay. Happy with that. That one I don't want anything else on. This one. Ooh, this one's just perfect. That's going to be a great background. Or torn up for something, or page in a book. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be, but I love it just the way it is. Now, what did I do with the actual magazine? Um, okay. Ah, got it. Let 
Let me get a card, swap some of this on here. Several pages worth. Good way to use up paint too. Um, did I get you into that rabbit hole, Jersey Crafter? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just don't like to be in the rabbit hole alone, so I drag people with me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Brooke, you watched me when I had a thousand subscribers. I thought I was like a rock star. I had, you know, you know when I thought I was a rock star? I had 200 subscribers, which is about 190 more than I ever thought I would have. <laughs> and I thought, man, I've got 200. I will never have more than this. But this is awesome. Like I did a big giveaway and everything because I had 200. <laughs> so you know what? Celebrate those victories, no matter how small they may seem. Because, I mean, seriously, I would have been totally content and happy with 200. And maybe 200 is all you'll get and then you can really nurture and bond with those 200 people or maybe you'll get more who knows <laughs> you wanted to be my next door neighbor <laughs> well, i'm glad you didn't move because you would have had to have moved several times I tell you what, like, I mean, y'all know these past, it's really, it's been what, six years now? They have just been not pleasant. We have moved way too much. We've lost jobs, gained jobs, lost houses, lost, car, like, lost everything, moved, and I, like, it's been crazy. We're still not out of the woods. But, we're doing the best we can with what we have, and that is all we can do. So, you know what? I'm just thankful to be here and be somewhat sane. Yeah, I say, I say that loosely. You just never know what life is going to throw at you. It was, this is definitely not where I saw myself at this stage in my life but I'm here and making the best of it and it's all good I mean here I am in the middle of the afternoon you know playing with paint and talking to y'all I can't very well complain about that right that's fun stuff why did I choose these awful colors what was I thinking I don't even know I don't even want to look at that. I want to put it somewhere where I can't see it. <laughs> there. Oh, and I squoze out a ton of them, too. Awesome. Hey, Gina. I mentioned you earlier because I'm wearing my apron. I wear it all the time, actually. I have two. I have one that Gina made for me, and then I have one that I made her her instructions on her YouTube channel, which I believe is Gina Aaron's or Gina B. Aaron's. And you can go and you can make you an extremely cool apron out of a pair of jeans. So there you have it. Yeah, I just want to use these up. Yep. 
They look pretty on the palette, but not on the paper. Okay. And okay, one thing I've been working on lately is classes, both online and in person. So if you are in the northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, eastern Oklahoma area, I have a class coming up on August the 10th. And I'm going to be showing how to do, how to transfer patterned paper onto fabric, onto canvas. Super easy. Something you can do when, you know, after you take class, right, when you go home. And we're going to be making a little canvas zipper pouch with the fabric transfer on it. So those are at 1320 Creative here in, in Springdale, actually. I live in Fayetteville, but Springdale's just up the road. And then I also have some online classes, or, okay, I have online class of one, and that is the online version of a class I recently did at 1320 that was all about um, making three single sheet books. You know, they're made out of a single sheet of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And there's three different styles. So that one is fun. That's available on my website, byshannongreen.com. If you look in the little area, there's an area that says classes. And they're over there. And I hope to be adding more of those. They're really time consuming, y'all. I'm... So just major props to those people who do regular online classes because, man, that's a lot of work. Just the prep work and the live classes. The class itself, it's no big deal. I could do that all day long. It's the prep work. Oh, my gosh. It's not in my Etsy. It's not in my Etsy shop. It's in my website, byshannongreen.com. I'm trying to, I have like a big girl website now, an actual website, and I'm trying to get most of my stuff transitioned over there. I have most of it. All of our custom keepers and stuff like that are on the website now, and the one thing that is not over there and I don't think I'll put there is digital downloads, and the reason is because of that VAT thing that people in the UK have to pay on digital downloads. It's a tax. And I don't understand it. I, I don't, you know, I don't get how to collect it and then who to pay it in and it to. And it just it kind of gives me a headache. And Etsy does it for me. <laughs> so for now, anyway, I'm keeping my digital downloads there so that they can handle it. But I do keep the website updated. So... Um, you know, everything you see in there is all up to date and current and I'm getting the whole hang of the Shopify thing. So that's better anyway. And there's some ways Etsy's better, some ways this, some ways this is better. You know, I certainly save all those Etsy fees, but then again, Shopify's not free. So, you know. You end up paying somebody one way or another. But I think it's definitely better to have a real website. I think I want to do some more printing. I like these colors. They're kind of, kind of oceany or something. I'm going to re-blob these colors. That one. And 
blue. Yes, thank you, um, Janet and um, Brooke and anyone else who is sharing links and um, getting rid of trolls and all of that. I really do appreciate it. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull these down so that I can stick something in them. What? This, this. This is that bubble wrap that's that, like, this is that cool bubble wrap. You know, it's not the flimsy kind. This is like the heavy duty, I don't know, industrial bubble wrap. Is that a thing? Like it doesn't, doesn't really ever lose its air. The other ones will kind of start going flat for no reason. This is like super bubble wrap. watched a good series the other day. We binged it. It's um, that one called The Boys. I think it's on Amazon Prime. I'm not really sure. Have any of y'all seen that? We really liked it. And Jason doesn't like superhero movies. Like, you know, he doesn't really care for the Marvel movies, which I think is strange. And I'm really not sure why I married him. But I did, so there you go. But anyway, he really liked this one. Because, like, the premise is superheroes that are, like, controlled by a corporation. And it's just all about profits and marketing and, you know, not so much about saving lives, but recording it on TV and then so the superheroes are not really good <laughs> not all of them anyway <laughs> they're kind of jerks or just downright criminal <laughs> so yeah it's it's an interesting premise which I like not your typical superhero premise and um it's not your typical superhero cheese. So if that sounds interesting to you, watch The Boys. I think it's Amazon Prime. We watched something else recently, too, that we thought was good, but now I can't remember what it was. Um, gosh. No, nope, it's gone. Can't remember. That's what we do in the evenings. <clears throat> Jason gets home. And he's home from work by 4 o'clock. He goes in early. And then, so we eat an early dinner, like old people, you know. And then we just vegetate on the couch. And sometimes I'll do other stuff while I'm watching TV. Because my attention span, it wanders. But sometimes I'll just sit there and stare at the TV with them. And that is our, that's our exciting evening schedule. Okay, that was good. I like that. What else have I got? Oh, I think I'll just put the background down. <clears throat> now, let's do, where's my brush? this whole magazine today. 
Shane, and what is that tool you are using? Okay. Which tool were you talking about? This is a brush. You're probably talking about this one, right? The, the thing. What did you do with it? This texture plate, if that's what you mean. Okay, if this is the tool you're talking about, this is a texture plate. I don't know um, where it came from. This might have been a Patty Parrish gift. It was definitely a gift from someone because I don't remember buying it. And um, I think maybe it's for clay, that it's made for clay, polymer clay. I'm not 100% sure, but... Um, that may be it, because I've seen I've seen texture plates like this that are for clay. So check that out at your, your craft store or wherever you can buy polymer clay and see if you can find some of these. They're just really, they're flimsy, plastic, they're deeply etched, so they print really well. Um, that is all I know about that. I have several of this style. I have this style. So yeah, they're just texture, texture plates, probably for polymer clay. I'm guessing. Did that answer your question? I hope that did. Okay. I'm just using that paint. Putting on the first layer so I can go back and do something interesting to it later after it dries. Let's see. Let's see what we've got over here. Okay, we're drying. We're doing good. get this one here and then go look at some of my other sheets. Let's go there and see where we are. Oh, I need to look back in my little, my little book to let's see. Um, there's my little book. This, if you were not here earlier and didn't hear me talking about this, this is just a sample book from a manufacturer that I don't even know if it exists anymore. Uh, but they sold packing papers and, um, okay, box board packaging, corrugated cardboard and craft paper, that kind of thing. And this is a sample book that, um, people could get from the manufacturer that shows their different kinds of papers. And it's just kind of a cheesy spiral bound thing. So I just started painting on it. Hey, Peg and Jamie, it's good to see y'all too. I'm so glad you stopped in. This is what we did earlier. Just throwing paint on there and playing with stencils and Texture tools and stuff and junk. So these can just kind of, you know, well, you can just go indefinitely on these. There's Harriet and Delilah and <laughs> flaming vaginas. <laughs> You missed that earlier. <laughs> Probably glad you did. <laughs> yeah, these are dry. 
texture plates. How to link stuff and junk. Yeah. Uh, but to figure that out. More texture plates and a flower mask. And wiping off the muddy brush. I really shouldn't let these drown here, but too late. I'll deal with them later. They're not like gunked on there. It's still kind of soft, so they'll be all right. Yeah, that is as far as I got with that. And there's still so many more. Mm hmm. I'm thinking these might need the roller deals. You know what? Let's play with these little kids roller things. Let's see what those do. I've never used them. I'm going to need my, my this clean side. There we go. And maybe these. I got these on Amazon, I think, a while back, I think. And let's just see. Uh oh. Did that? What happened? Here it is. I didn't pay a whole lot for these, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> and let's see. They're spongies, so they soak up a lot of paint. There's that. So, let's see what happens. Well, there we go. It works. Interesting. Yeah, and they are spongy, but you just press down and you get more out of it. Well, that's just not bad. Huh. Not bad at all. Okay. Let's go there. Yeah. I have plans for that one. I already know in my mind that I want to doodle on it. So I'm not going to do this. Let's see what this one does. Let's spread this paint out a little bit more. What kind of rollers are these? I wish I knew. They are kids spongy roller things from Amazon. There's a link. Thank you very much, ma'am. And um, yeah, I just bought them a while back. And I occasionally do art with my uh, nephew. And I got these to possibly use with him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of liking them. <laughs> yeah, these might just be mine. Uh -huh, they're not bad at all, really. Okay, let's try this one. I'm liking that. Ooh. Let's see what I can do about that. Oh, my 
There we go. <laughs> okay, in theory, that works. Find another painty paper. are really they're kind of I mean like you know they're not like super impressive or anything it's just basic basic shapes textures but they're kind of soothing to use they just they feel nice to roll across there I also got these again somewhere on Amazon and they're just different texture deals for kids so well that kind of looks cool like that <laughs> I like the texture it made in the paint there alrighty so that's a little weird Pretty sure I don't need this tool to get that effect, but there you go. And another one. Let's go to our other book or our other pages. Okay. That's fine. Start at the bottom, maybe. Here's one. All right. And this one's got little loopy things. So let's see. Oh, well, that's not bad. It's not like wowing me. But it's fun. It's not done until it's overdone, y'all. Bear with me. Okay, now it's overdone. So, right there. And what else do we have? This one. What's that? That, there is no way that this can even print decently. Like, what is that? Is that right? Is it coming undone? Should it be different? I don't oh, Wait, there we go. That's a little flatter. Oh, they've come out of their slots. Now that'll print, or it should. Not fun. A little funner. Okay. Maybe it has potential. Or not. I don't even know if I'm using these in the right way. But you know what? There we have it. Okay. You know, not terrible. Um, now, I don't know what this is. It's got like a texture pattern here. Like I would want to scrape it, but then you're not going to pick up the texture pattern. Maybe it's, I don't know. See if we can figure out what you're supposed to do with it. I don't understand the, um, is that it? I mean, if that's the way you're supposed to use it, I, I could think of about a dozen different ways to have manufactured it to <laughs> be more efficient. Is it just supposed to be like that? No. Uh, what else? What do you do with it? 
twist it. See, if you drag it, you get nothing. I guess it's just this. I don't need that. How about, what is this one? Oh, that one's fun. Yeah. Okay, the rest of them are kind of stupid. This one made it worth the probably $5 I paid for it. Yeah, I like that one. Use those, use those, use all that. Well, that seems kind of self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Like, do I really need a special tool for that? I'm not really sure that I do. Maybe I do. That's all right. Same with this one. This is just like one of the combs that we use, you know, and I always like those. It looks a lot like that other one. Again, is this really the best application, you know, handle design for it? They really should have talked to me. I could have given them some better ideas. And then this is another one, like that other one, that I guess you're supposed to use like this, which, why did they make it in this weird handle shape for that, if that's it? Well, there you have it. We have textures. And let's see, I'm digging in my texture box. See, I've got one of those comb things. Um, well, I have some of these that I made once upon a time. Masks, just cause. See, you can do this. Like so. Or do them in mask fashion like this. Yeah, those are fun for about a half a minute. Okay, I think I'm running out of steam, y'all. I've been sitting here, what, two and a half hours? Oh, yep, two and a half hours. Um, still go back to these toilet paper wall ones. They're my favorites, especially this one. As you can see, because it's gotten so much paint gunked up in between the rubber bands that it's almost kind of solid now. <laughs> yeah, but it's what I like. Oh, let's do, yeah, let's do my other... One of my other favorites is everybody can do this one. Okay. Let me find a good paper to do it on. I do this one. And you just take a piece of your like used up wax paper put it in the paint you can even just like paint directly on it 
and then just tap it down gently onto your background. Try not to make handprints. And do that, because that is fun. Another one to do that. It looks really good on dark backgrounds, you know, if you've got like a really dark background and you need to lighten it up. That little wax paper thing is good. Yes, you can use a plastic bag. That's right, Jamie, you can use plastic wrap. I just tend, this is like what I do when my wax paper is no longer waxy and it doesn't keep anything from sticking anymore and I'm fixing to throw it out. So I do this before I throw it out. <laughs> that's basically what that's all about. Okay. So I've got color on paper that I can continue to add to. Maybe we'll do another live and then I can just keep adding to these and we can visit. Yes, dry brushing over it with a dry paintbrush is good. Um, lots of ways to do that. To lighten up a paper or even darken it. Use black paint or a complementary color paint. Okay, this was fun. Okay. Lots of pages here. Oh, this one I love. This one just like automatically finished itself. And this one, oh, I need to open See, because after this, you can take a drawing pen and go in and make just little messy squares inside. You can do inside those squares if you want to, or just add little lines. Yeah, just make it kind of a whole thing. This is a Faber-Castell pit pen in black, which writes well over dry acrylics. Got to be dry. This. Oh, that little piece that we used to print on. You know what? Oh, yeah. Now, it's got its own metallic stuff in the background, plus the paint that we put on top, plus a little bit of white. That looks kind of cool. Again, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these papers, but there you have them. If y'all missed the first part of today's uh, very long broadcast, you can go back and watch the recording on my channel, and you can see all of these really cool um, papers, textured, exotic, handmade papers that... I have adopted, I guess, and some um, paper sample books that I got too. So back up and watch that if you're interested. And I will figure out what to do with um, the magazine pages and with these pages. Well, I won't figure out what to do with them. I mean, I've done what I want to do with them, but I will figure out if I want to add more to them. And we'll just see what happens. We'll see if they actually morph into something or, I don't know. This one I think really could. So I think that's it. I am going to um, head out 
Thank you all again so much for tuning in. I sure do appreciate you. Thank you for visiting with me and keeping me company and crafting along with me. And um, we'll do this again. I don't know. You know, I'm really bad at setting schedules, but you know, good intentions. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. So, yeah, I've got to figure out how to turn this off. Oh, there. It says in stream. Okay, so that's what I'll do. Thanks, y'all. Visit my um, YouTube channel. Check out some videos if there's some there you haven't seen. Visit my new website, buyshannongreen.com, and see what's happening there. And um, share videos, not just mine, but everyone else's, because everyone on YouTube works hard on these videos. And this is not easy. So, you know, share and subscribe, do that whole thing. And I will catch y'all later. The end.